Hello and welcome to another edition of e-commerce Odyssey podcast. Um, I'm joined today by Rosie Bailey from Nibble. Now your tool is, is new and exciting, so perhaps you'd like to explain to us a bit about what it does. Do you know, I've never been on an Odyssey before. An I'm Odyssey? Well, everyone, we're all on an Odyssey. <laughs> we're all on our own personal uh, Odyssey. It took me ages to think of the name. It's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Um, so Nibble um, is negotiation technology, which makes it sound very grand. I could tell you it was AI powered. Um, but really what it is, is a chatbot that can sit on a, on a retailer's website, on an e-commerce website, and negotiate a personalized deal with your customer. Um, uh, critically, it makes the customer smile in the process of giving them a personalized price. Okay, so I have to ask because I'm, I'm, you know, my first thought when I, I saw this was, is it a gimmick? You know, is it the kind of thing that we, because I, you know, as a retailer and as a consultant, I see loads and loads of tools. Is this something that I need to, is it a flash in the pan? Or is it something that I need to invest in? Yes, and we've, we've intentionally made it lighthearted. So we're probably a victim of our own positioning in that sense. And, and it's, it's totally fair to say, is this going to be a bit like spin the wheel for 10% off and other such very naff things? The critical thing is, is it's sort of rooted in the behavioral science behind the experience that means that it works. Because it engages your customer in a conversation, your customer is empowered to say what they like about the product, what they want, what they would like differently. Whereas the retailer at the same time is totally in control of the promotion. It's only displayed when you want to, it's only displayed to, to people that you want to have a conversation with. Once the conversation starts, we find about 25% add to basket. And that's just because you've been bought in at that point. It, it, it's, to, it's, it's actually fundamental prospect theory if you're very into Daniel Kahneman and thinking fast, thinking slow. Mm -hmm. But it's to do with the fact that once you've engaged in a conversation, the, the customer's bought in to getting that deal but at the same time they'll do things like say can i get a bigger discount if i buy two at the same time and things like and that so what proportion I mean, what kind of deals do you think what works work, work best with the system how do you get the most out of it so uh, we've done a, a comprehensive trial with lucky voice who sell karaoke machines mm -hmm. uh and fox no doubt. no doubt yes exactly years ago and um we found one in five of their customers say, if I add a second microphone at the point of purchase, can I get a better discount? Well, that's okay. And so that's just another way of doing the bundle. But it, of course, on e-commerce, it's often advertised as karaoke machine or karaoke machine and second microphone, right? There's two different SKUs, if you like. Mm. Because what this is doing is, is allowing that person to add that second microphone really at the point of purchase. So really sort of traveling with so them. You're automating, you're automating bundling, basically. You can automate bundling. You can um, do gift with purchase. You can, you can just give someone the nudge they need. We're on a watch website. And in watches, negotiating the price is quite common, especially mm -hmm. on marketplaces. And what it tends to be is people just want to feel like they've won. They want to have a little bit of a nudge, a little bit of a bit over the line, and then they say, I think I've done quite well. Right. So is it a bit like, I don't know if you're, because I mean, you know, some people, my answer to everything is always marketplaces, right? No matter what the question is, it's either international trade or marketplaces. So I always think on eBay, you have second chance offers. It's a little bit like that with a, you know, someone A little bit like that and just... The technology that you can do now through natural language is just so much better than it was when eBay was created that the make an offer button is a very static, very slow experience, right? It can be SMS to SMS. It can take half a day to negotiate a deal. And if you look at, there's companies like Poshmark that have over 7 million users haggling every day and Depop has 2 million. For these people negotiating as part of the purchase, is just integral to the experience and actually really fun and engaging. And so but this is a sort of upgrade of eBay's make an offer button. But is this like, okay, because you've got different classes of items. So something like Deep, and I don't know, confess, I don't know much about Depop, right? Um, and it's a second, is it second hands? It's a clothing site. Clothing, right? yeah. So they're not, okay, so you've got certain items which are unique items, right? Let's call them, I mean, unique by the extent of, you know, okay, things Maybe that are vintage unique, or something. They're not you know? fungible. They're, they're mm. you know, they're vintage or they're secondhand or they're used, right? Now, so at which point, you know, it is a kind of like, because, um, you know, an auction is to a certain extent a negotiation, right? Mm. Yeah. Um, whereas someone like me would sell, quite specifically, sell new items, which are, 
you know, they're, they're allegedly entirely identical. So therefore, you know, we, and, and I think, you know, to a certain extent, I think one of the reasons why, why Amazon did better than eBay is because, you know, people just want to go onto a site and just buy at a price, which is advertised. I mean, most people just, you know, just buy, go, you know, you don't want yeah. to, you know, I, you know, I don't want the hassle of necessarily having to, having to haggle things unless the, yeah. you know, just, do you find, would it work on, you know, like a site, I mean, you know, a, a large retailing site where people want a quick purchase and they don't necessarily want to. Yes, it does, but not in every circumstance, right? Like the customer doesn't want to feel like, oh my God, I have to go through this process again, you know, just to get the discount that you were always going to give me, right? It can't feel yes. like that. Um, and so it'll never be used on every single one of your products at the same time it will be used because that customer is logged in and a loyal customer, they have the opportunity to negotiate, but other people don't. Or if we use because mid season, you're overstocked with one item, but you don't want to put the website on sale. So you just put the negotiate button on the, on the item that's overstocked to bring your stock levels down to where you need it to. So you'll use it in specific examples, but you won't use it everywhere and all the no, it's time. Not a, it's not an extra stage to the, because I would be, I mean, I don't know if you know some of these, um, did you come across, um, oh, what was it called? Uh, Flub it, no? No. No, Flub it was Flubbit. a reverse auction marketplace. Uh -huh. problem with the reverse auction marketplaces is that they uh, add, basically, effectively, you're adding an extra stage to the... Just adding friction. Yeah, just adding friction. And, yeah. and um, so it's not a... You, you don't feel this adds friction to the process. Because it's about a minute, it's very, very slow, very, very quick compared to any other form of negotiation that you might have seen. Yeah, so it's definitely. But any kind of, but if you, you know, but any kind of thing, you know, I don't know what the, the you know, people come up with all kinds of figures about how, um, you know, if you start your page doesn't load in two seconds, yeah. you lost the customer. Or exactly. Something. So, exactly. It's, so a it minute does, is forever in internet time. A, a minute is forever in internet time, unless you compare it to the journey that a customer goes. And I was talking to someone. He bought some Puma trainers last week, and he went to the Puma website. He found the trainers he wanted to. He then spent five minutes looking for a discount code or the same Puma trainers on Zalando and several other websites. So when you compare it to that sort of purchase process, it is a ton, ton quicker, more unique and more fun. So you're yes. basically saying to your customer, I know there's voucher codes out there. I know there are marketplaces you can go to, and I know that you want to feel special. So let's have a conversation and see whether we can find a place to meet in the middle. So, so it adds friction, but relative to the what bargain do you, hunting less. what do you think in terms of conversion rate how did it improve conversion rate so at lucky voice conversion rate it went up 50 percent from pre-covid levels um oh. so so and interestingly enough the volumes of full price sales were constant year on year and the increased sales were the ones that nibbled it if that makes right. sense. Okay. Um, the numbers were less extreme, but they were still up on lockdown. And actually, funnily enough, everybody tried to buy a home karaoke kit in lockdown. And so our trial actually showed a 8% uplift on lockdown levels. Okay. That's impressive. Maybe we'll give it a go. <laughs> um, yeah. Or maybe first time lucky. I don't know. But um, I think the I'm not surprised when you see the chat, people they like it they love it they they have fun they go is that the best you can do and occasionally imbecile why won't you offer me more and you know it's very now, how do you how do you okay voice. so because i had a play with it right and i found mm. that i don't know i can't remember what i got off but it, it, it felt to me that i did it twice and i got different different results so is there a random element to it you probably don't want to tell me your secret couldn't possibly tell you the secret of the algorithm yes that's intentional. So if you go to a, a, to a marketplace and you negotiate with an individual, the result you get will depend on how that individual is feeling that day, whether they're optimistic, whether they've sold a lot, whether they're pissed off, you know, that kind of thing. So it was important to us to give a little bit of a random element to it. And what you tend to find is people who are purchasing something significant in value or unusual for them, like a karaoke machine or a set of kitchen knives, they will come twice. A lot of them will come twice. And it was really important to us to give them the chance to come twice because there's something in negotiation speak called buyer's remorse. And it's that feeling when you've bought that carpet after 10 cups of mint tea and then you walk away with it and you think, damn it, if, 
if they sold me this carpet, I must have overpaid. And, and yeah. so we wanted to give people the second chance is important to be honest with them, to give them the chance to do the best that they want to do. Okay. So what kind of features are you planning in the future for this product? Um, so bundling will be out, proper bundling will be out in the next couple of weeks. And we're quite excited about that because there's a lot of things you can do with gift with purchase and putting items together. But when a customer is negotiating and they go, is that the best I can do if I add another item? When the chatbot comes back and says, I think you might want to add a second microphone, we can do that. This upside surprise on the level of intelligence of that conversation is, is very positive for the customer experience. So does it pass the chewing test? <laughs> not quite yet, but we're working on it. Okay. Yeah. So I don't know. It's not uh, quite clever enough yet, but it's... No, I don't know. I don't, anything, saying... anything, I don't know if anything has anything passed the chewing test. It's, yeah. a, it's a different conversation. No, exactly. Oh, I yeah, you should. I, I'm, I did maths at uni, actually, so I'm, I'm quite um, excited. We're going to put some reinforcement learning in the um, bot which is basically how Google DeepMind beat the Go grandmasters. So watch this space. It's well, it's okay. Interesting. Um, yeah, because I think, I think um, I, I, I've found with these kind of chat things that they, I mean, they have improved an awful lot. They used to mm. be very basic and now it's, it's, it's getting pretty good. We've got a fundamental strategic question. And if anyone on the back of this wants to get in touch and give me their view, is how much to make Nibble feel like an it and how much to make Nibble feel like a human. We basically did some user research. And if you ask people, do you like negotiating in real life? In most scenarios we've asked the question, we get about 50-50. So half the people say, yeah, I love negotiating. It's a bit of fun. I get a great deal. And half say, it scares living daylights out of me and I don't like the conflict. But if you ask so you the do... question about a chatbot, 85% say they prefer that because it's less embarrassing and less scary. So have you read Don't uh, Never Split the Difference? Yeah, yeah. No, because that was that was quite interesting. The the idea in that that um, you know asking what do they call them? Yeah. Asking certain questions like you know the the always always you know kind of wearing out the other side by asking too many questions. Yeah. I thought that was I thought it was a fascinating book. So if you get okay. on Nibble, you can ask Nibble to tell you a joke. Uh, no, well, that's kind of the classic kind of Siri thing, isn't it? Really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah we've programmed all of those in. Um, so, is it is it your own, you know to what extent these days can you do you have to develop your own AI or those kind of you know presumably you can buy in you know from from AWS or AI yeah so AI components. In, so you can buy in the chatbot interface, right? The 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 and so what that does is means you can program what they call intents rather than every single way that it might be phrased. You can program in 10 ways someone might, might make an offer and the chat base interface will use the natural language processing on your behalf to try and work out the hundred ways somebody yeah. might make an offer. But you have to program the way the bot speaks. So all of the text is our copy. And then the other thing is, is obviously we've created an algorithm to negotiate right so it can come back with numbers so if you say 100 the bot will say 120 if you then say 105 the bot will then say 110 or, or whatever it will say but it will also say it with a mood so that when it comes back it will say it will say it in an optimistic way if you're very close to agreement and it will say it in a pessimistic way if you're a long way off to try and encourage you to in exactly like you would with a human negotiator to recognize where the killing ground is if that makes okay. sense Okay, so your your time in a merchant bank, presumably the cutthroat world of merchant banking, uh, has helped you in your negotiation. <laughs> this, is, this is fundamentally a lot cleverer than anything I was asked to do. In banking. <laughs> <laughs> so, in in terms of okay, so uh, would you be integrating with other kind of chat systems? Because it seems to me, you know, these days we've got lots of you know, there's Telegram, there's you know, WhatsApp, etc. And I I'm quite surprised that um, we're not all using. You know, I you know for my uh, retail side, I've been trying to use um, Google, not so Facebook chat instead of mm. using our own chat thing. Will eventually this be your, you know, this something be a, a an add-on for Facebook chat? I would have thought so. Uh, I, you know, if Facebook chat wants to use Nibble, I'm sure we could come to an agreement. I'm sure you um, can just write an app for it. I mean, you don't even have to yeah. ask. You could probably just. Um, because we think this is a part of the consumer journey that other people aren't tackling. 
And if they are, they aren't tackling it with enough um, focus on value, right? Like there's lots of customer service chatbots, but they, they effectively digitize your FAQ. Whereas this actually can have a conversation about value in a way it can evaluate two different paths, if you like. Shall we give you this item and free shipping or should we ask you to bundle two items at the same time? And it can work out the difference in value and have a value-based conversation with a human on that. And if you think about um, voice commerce, I know McDonald's are working really hard on um, having a voice activated app on your smart mm -hmm. speaker at home. And you can think about that. You go, can I have the McDonald's order I had last Tuesday? And she goes, oh, would that be the Big Mac and fries that you had last time? Yes, please. And at the end of that, you're not going to go, oh, by the way, Alexa, please, could I write XJ21FJU into the voucher code box? You're just never going to do it. Yeah. You're going to go, can I get a discount? And Nibble can power that conversation, mm -hmm. which so, we're quite excited about. So you could, you could, um, but how would you, okay, so isn't it just the case that everyone will be asking for a discount? Or maybe maybe people are, is it, is it, have you got any comparison between British people and say Chinese people? Because my experience with Chinese people is they're just much better at negotiating than I am. Yeah, because everything's done through WeChat, right? Like, so it's just, it's just it's totally just. standard. I mean, look, I think in the UK, it depends what you're ordering. I, 85, 90% of Domino's pizzas are ordered with a discount. Yes, well, that's because they, they, well, Pizza, I went to Pizza Express the other day and there wasn't a discount code and I was quite upset. Yes. I, know, really I, haven't, paid, I, haven't, paid that, full, I haven't paid full price in Pizza Since Express. Since the 90s. Oh, not for years, not for 10 yeah. years, not for. But, but everybody in the restaurant trade blames Pizza Express for introducing this in the 90s. You know what happened is the Times, the newspaper, offered to put that banner ad saying two for £10 yeah. because it sold more newspapers. So Pizza Express never paid for that promotion. I mean, obviously they gave you the discount in this in store, but they never paid the time for the positioning because it sold more newspapers. And that was just the beginning of the end. Well, it just gives, I mean, you know, I, I mean, it, it, I mean, suppose my mind on something like this is right. You know, you have a chat box there, you're encouraging people to use it. They will always get a discount. Now, if it's a voucher code, I mean, I don't know what percentage the people who are more price sensitive will go and look for a voucher code. And yeah, I've looked at everyone. it. It's about 60% of customers. We'll go and look for voucher code. Yes. Yeah, well, that so would be. But if you look at the number of users of Honey, I think it's over for fifteen million now. Yeah. So we would. Um, I don't know what the the. Um, I would worry that absolutely everyone would would get a voucher code, but I'm more interested. You know, uh, we're being more interested in something which in, in, increases people AOV. Mm -hmm. So I think it's that bit of your tool which I'm interested in, less the the discount. Yeah, but I, I think, think the point a... is, the interesting thing there is, is because you start with the negotiation you start with a customer who's leaning into you. You start by saying, okay, I'm open for negotiation. Should we have a chat? And at that point, the customer's going, yeah, I'd like to have a chat. I'm, I'm really interested in making a purchase and I'm sure there's a way we can make it work. Whereas if you just do a gift with purchase button, it's, it's much, much less engaging. So I would argue that with this tool, the conversion is gonna be higher. Okay, cool. So finally, one last question for you. What has inspired you recently? It's a bit geeky, but I am quite excited about the maths. You might excited about the maths. <laughs> cool. I am quite excited maths. about the maths behind this. Like there's, there's basically a ton we can do to make Nibble smarter and cleverer. And if you think about a salary negotiation, for example, you go to, the, to your new employer and they say, oh, I'll offer you 10 pounds an hour. And you say, you forget I've worked in this relevant area and I'm definitely worth at least 15 pounds an hour. And, and at each stage, each person gives and takes more information. Mm. And a combination of the massive step changes in natural language processing, sentiment analysis, and this um, geeky reinforcement learning I'm just learning about in machine learning. There's actually quite a lot you can do to make, make it a very human-like experience. So it's going to be, you're, you're excited about making it better. Yeah, I think because the better it is, the more it can do what you want it to do and the less it looks like an alternative to a voucher code. OK, so at the cool. start, it looks like a voucher code that's frankly converts more than a voucher code. But towards the end, it looks like a, an opportunity for a single brand to talk to millions of customers at the same time with very, very little data integration. Right. Like you don't need to know anything about that person except what they're willing to talk to you about. So okay. you don't have to 
scrape their Facebook. So from a GDPR point of view, it's it's a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I can imagine. Um, so, I mean, do you do you actually pull in information about, say, the IP address and stuff like that? And and no, it's just it's just all almost intentionally. I mean, maybe one day, maybe I can see a scenario where Nibble says, "Hey, Trevor, tell me a little bit about yourself, and I might be able to get you a better deal." And you give your email address, and they go, "Oh, Trevor, I can see you're a loyal customer, and you purchased with us five times before." In that case, I de definitely would like to give you a better offer. Mm -hmm. But it would be very. But I like the idea of doing it within the chat so that anybody can buy. And it's only in your interests to share that information rather than, frankly, being cookied. Mm, which is on the way out. Which is on the way out. Yeah. Rosie, it's been great talking to you. Thank and you I so look much. forward to I look forward to I, we may want to try out your 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 system and I look forward to seeing how it improves in the future. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks. Goodbye. Bye. Stop this. Uh